What does magic sound like? That's only one of a million questions. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Hi, my name is Marshall and this is Waveform. Despite a recent Harry Potter episode from famed YouTube essayist and all-around smart guy, Nerdwriter, I've decided to forge on with my own episode on the same subject. Nerdwriter may have much better videos, a better sounding voice, and 95.8 times more subscribers than me. Who's counting, really? But here on Waveform... We're not cavemen! We have technology! I'm not just going to tell you what Harry Potter spells sound like, I'm going to show you how you can make them. Making magic spell sounds is one of the most creative and fun exercises you can do to improve your sound design chops. It forces you to think outside the box in a way that most other things don't. And for that reason, every sound designer does it completely differently. To illustrate this point, I invited my friend Akash the Car to join me for this episode. You know him from his game audio TED Talks and his sound design work on Hyperlight Drifter. We're each going to take the same five audio samples and design spell sounds from them. Then we're going to compare what our designs sound like to see how different they are, even though we started with the same exact five sounds. But first, let's chat about what makes a spell sound. Most of the time on this show, we make sounds truly from scratch with our own recordings, which is an awesome way to do it, and it really works out your sound designer muscles. But there are some times when it's just not that practical. When deadlines are tight, it can be rare to get more than a day to work on a sound, and if you're looking for high quality, very specific content, you very often need to draw from a sound effects library. One of the questions I get asked constantly is what audio software do I use? It's a totally reasonable question, but I try not to answer it whenever I can because I don't think it matters, frankly. I use the software that I like because it's what I'm used to, but I have coworkers and friends who work with completely different software and are making the coolest stuff I've ever heard. In my opinion, it matters so much more what samples you use and how you use them than what audio software you have. To draw an analogy to cooking, your library of sounds are like your ingredients, and your audio program is like your pan. I personally would rather have one good pan that I really love and know how to use, and then spend most of my money on fresh ingredients to experiment with. Some people in the audio world get obsessed with getting the best pots, pans, and spatulas, but don't often spend time thinking about what they're cooking with. That's why I was psyched when Pro Sound Effects approached me with their sound library, the Odyssey Collection Essentials, to use in this video. It's the Swiss Army knife of sample libraries, and it represents the kind of range and diversity that you often need to sketch out an idea quickly and easily. There are over 16,000 samples of everything from animal calls to vehicle engines in here, and it comes directly from sound designers Mark Mangini and Richard L. Anderson, who have done sound for some of my favorite films of all time. So today, instead of pulling sounds from the real world with an iPhone microphone, I'll be using exclusively recordings from the Odyssey collection to show you a more practical view of what my audio workflow is actually like. If the question is, how do I design a magic spell sound from scratch? The short answer is, however you want. But the long answer is a bit more complicated. Each spell you design will be unique. There are no rules that can apply to all of them. But I find it best to ask yourself these three questions before starting. One, what does it do? both emotionally in the context of the situation and physically in the world. Two, what does it look like? What kind of visual accompanies this spell? Does it move? How fast does it move? Is it bright or dark? And three, how does it react? Where was it cast? Is the spell deflected? Does it explode or maybe it just hits a wall and fizzles out? The answer to these questions for whatever spell you're making are really all you need to get off on the right foot when starting your design. And these three questions are exactly where I started when I picked the five sounds that Akash and I would be using to make our spells. Here's what we used. First, to accompany the visual of the McGonagall spell, I grabbed a series of flame whooshes from the Odyssey collection. They sounded like this. Then to give us something bright to work with, I grabbed these hissy firework launcher sounds as well. For some deep rumble and texture, I also threw in some tank impacts. So far these sounds are all pretty ripe for magicification, if you will, but I wanted to give a cash a little bit more of a challenge, so I also threw in this bird screech and a baby doll squeak just to spice things up a bit. Alright, here's the clip we made our first sound for. I'm going to play it three times back to back. If you want, pause the video and think about how you'd want it to sound if you were asked to design it.
So the first thing I did was create a snappy low end impact, almost like a kick drum in an EDM song. I want to start off on a powerful note here. So I took the tank impacts and built transients with them. This is something I love doing to add punch and clarity to a sound. Basically, what I did was make five tracks with five different tank impacts on them, and then I pitched two of them up as high as I could until they were little tiny 10 millisecond unrecognizable pop sounds. Then I did the opposite to the other three, creating a very isolated low end hit with almost no high end at all. Layered together with some distortion, they sounded like this. Then I went back in and layered some of the doll squeak as well as some high hiss from the bird cry. Here's what my first layer sounded like altogether. What we're still missing is a sense of motion. I used the flame sounds and firework hiss to create a bed of eight whoosh sounds that all rise in pitch until Voldemort appears in the frame and then fall back down as the magic settles. I also added some volume tremolo to the end to make it feel more like the spell disturbs space around it. If you don't know what tremolo sounds like, here's what it sounds like on my voice. Here's what that layer sounds like on its own. Then I brought those two layers together, added some compression and reverb, and here's what I got. I was excited to see how Akash would approach his design. We're using exactly the same sounds, but he and I have such crazy different approaches to sound design. You know what, I'll just let him explain. Yeah, so for, for Voldemort, I knew I wanted it to sound evil. Because Voldemort's the bad guy. And I knew I could use those metal hits to help with that quite a bit. Um, so I took metal hits. I, you know, this, oh, reverse thing. The biggest trick that sound designers use every, all day, every day. And everyone's like, that sounds so cool. Like, it's just a reverse thing into a forward thing. And so I just took a bunch of metal hits, reverse them, and then have other metal hits underneath it that aren't reversed, just playing forward. So it builds up and then expands and explodes into his apparition and affected those using eq pitch shifting so what i'll do is I'll, I'll i'll work with all those different layers and go like okay that's starting to sound dark that's starting to sound evil that's starting to sound menacing it's different from any other spell that would probably exist in this world cool here's layer one of apparition even though it took four layers to make up just like you mentioned and then go from there i knew the bird calls are going to actually add a lot of cackling on top once i add a delay and a pitch shifting and reverb and a chopper and all that sort of stuff on top of it so i started working on that time stretching it out so it sounds otherworldly and different basically the theme here was making it sound as evil as possible so the 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 curveball the the bird call and the doll cry were actually like the most helpful for this one Now we've got a different spell to make. Once again, I'll play the video three times silently. Do your best to hear in your mind what you'd want your version to sound like. I treated this sound as two separate things, the cast and the block. First, I made the block. I wanted Snape blocking the spell to have weight and power just like the Voldemort clip, so I started in a similar way gathering material from the doll squeaks and the tank hits to build a sharp, punchy kick. Then I layer together the flames and the fireworks at different pitches to create the sound of the spell dissipating and being blocked. It was important here to make sure that it continued to get more bright and intense up until the point that it hits and fizzles out. Timing is everything when working on a clip like this one. Then, to make the casting sound, I applied all the techniques in the previous layers, using the bird call to add a bright upper texture, and adding delay to the left and right ears to increase the sense of the spell getting wider as it gets closer to you. Here's what the spell sounds like altogether. Let's see what it cast did. So for the, the spell that she shoots, what I did was work on the main areas first. So I knew there'd be fire, right? And you included fire into the little pack. So perfect. Um, so I, would, I just wanted the like whoosh of the spell going through the air. So I have, well, let's see, how many fire layers do I have? Seven fire layers. 
Um, and then what I'll do is from there, I'll focus on one key element. So let's say it's the deep whoosh of the flame going through the air. I'll listen to it. Okay, am I satisfied with the general character of this? Yes, no, no. I'm going to add other layers on top. Let's make it sound more boomy, more bright, more reverberated, whatever it may be, um, until I'm satisfied with that layer. And then I'll generally bounce back and forth between certain things and balance them. Um, so what I did was after I bounced it out, I, well, I put it to a group track. I put a really, really, really mild compressor on it just so I know everything's a little glued together, nothing too crazy, not a hard limiter or anything like that. Bounce it out, look at it in isotope, listen to it on internal speakers and monitors and headphones to make sure it sounds like good enough. Like, yep. <laughs> and then, uh, sometimes there are little elements in, in the samples itself or using the plugins that I use that are undesirable. Like, oh, this is a little like has a bit of a click to it or like a high end shriek to it that I didn't want, but I like the character of it. So I actually go into Isotope and I'm like, I'm just going to spectral repair some of this, or I'm just going to de-click some of this and then fix it, fix up tiny little imperfections there after the fact. So I did that for both of these as well, just to make it sound a little more balanced. Lumos. Spell sounds are super fun and challenging to make, and I hope after watching this you'll try it for yourself. And hey, if all else fails, just go outside and have a friend cast the, the actual spells and then get a, you know, a nice mic and record the sound. That's how they recorded the actual spell sounds used in the movies. Shout out to Pro Sound Effects again for sending me the Odyssey Collection Essentials Library. If you want to check it out, link is in the description. Also, huge thanks to Akash the Car for joining me in making all these sweet magic sounds. His YouTube videos are amazingly informative, and you should really watch them all if you want to do sound design professionally and are curious what that entails. I'll also throw his info in the description. But most of all, shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys already know you're my favorite. I'll give you a second here just to bask in your own glory. And hey, if you're thinking of joining the Patreon, now is the time. I'm offering a limited time 30 minute recorded video lesson of how I made these sounds track by track that you'll gain access to if you become a patron before the new year. Let me know what sounds you want to see me make next on Waveform. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.